You're listening to Shoe In, covering the ins and outs of all things footwear, from sneakers to heels, loafers to slippers, and every type of shoe in between. Brought to you by the FDRA, the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion. Helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. Hello, Shoe and Show listeners. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Shoe and Show podcast. We are coming to you live on a recording from Capitol Hill. My partner in crime, Thomas Crockett. Part, uh, Thomas, we're here at 1130 Longworth House Office Building with the Honorable Congressman Jared Motzkowitz of the Florida 23rd District. Congressman, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for coming on Shoe and Show. We've been wanting to do this for a long time. We're very excited to be here, and thanks for hosting us. No, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. That was a long introduction, by the way. <laughs> it was, uh, man. With the music and, and all the theatrics. What, what, kind of, what kind of budget do you guys have? It's minimal that you're looking at uh, our one of right here. By the way, it shows. It shows. <laughs> I hope you're taking inspiration off of what we do in our podcast for whatever you do with your future ones. But what you currently are involved in is the Congressional Sneaker Caucus. You are the founder. It sounds super official and amazing. But talk to us about why you decided to come up with the Congressional Sneaker Caucus, kind of what's the, gener- the genesis of it, what are the primary goals of it. You know, it's funny. It's kind of like a. It's kind. Of, it's almost a, a personal story. So, you know, I've I was always big into sneakers when I was growing up. But like when you're growing up in the '90s, and you know, one pair of Jordans would drop, you know, at a time. It wasn't like now where, you know, you, you can't keep up with how many Jordans they're releasing each week. You know, you go on the sneaker app. We're all like waiting for the draw. Like, are we going to get it? You know, as, as if, you know, they're releasing like you know, the latest product that we ha- we just have to have. Uh, and then there's all these secondary sites that you can buy shoes from the last several decades. It was one shoe a year. Maybe it came out in two colors, right? You went to Foot Locker or Finish Line or Champs, which was only at a mall, right? It wasn't online. Yep. It wasn't online. It wasn't, and it wasn't really anywhere else, but maybe the local mall or your local strip center. Uh, you, you got there, you know, before the store opened, the day it was launching, you know, the store was closed, the, the metal gates were down, and there was a line already out the door. And, and when they opened it, everyone ran in, ran right to the register uh, and, tried to, and tried to get a pair of shoes. And by the way, if you didn't get shoes that day, the day they came out, you didn't get shoes. Right. They were gone. Um, and so, you know, I was lucky enough that, you know, my, my family was able to uh, afford that for me. Obviously, you know, shoot, some of those shoes weren't cheap then, let alone now. Sure. Uh, but, you know, that was kind of like, Part of my experience, I was a huge Michael Jordan fan uh, growing up in the 90s. My whole room was Michael Jordan. I had a six foot six Michael Jordan literally in my bedroom that, you know, once in a while when I had a friend over and the lights were turned off, they'd walk in and just like fall <laughs> down. <laughs> um, and, and I had Michael Jordan everywhere. I mean, just like poster boards of Michael Jordan. I mean, there's Michael Jordan right here in my congressional uh, office. We can, yep. We, okay. We are it. witnesses to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the picture of Michael Jordan is bigger than my family. <laughs> uh, and and so you know you know just being a huge Jordan fan and being into into his sneakers, you know my my dad would come with me to to do all of this stuff obviously because I was a kid and you know he brought me to many games to see Jordan play. I saw Jordan you know courtside one time playing the the Heat in the playoffs and and then even you know when uh, Jordan retired for the second time, yeah, um, I wound up going to GW for college, and who follows? Well, Michael Jordan. That's right. Right. He winds up, you know, buying part of the Wizards, becoming president of basketball operations, and then I'm, you know, one. I'm just waiting for him to play, and then next thing we know, now he's on the team. So it was a, it was a really cool experience, uh, you know, growing up doing that, and that's that that's that connection. But the reason why it's personal is, unfortunately, you know, my dad passed away uh, literally a month before I launched my campaign for Congress. Yeah. Uh, and so you know, I was trying to figure out a way to like embrace my childhood something that would remind me of like things that my dad and I used to do together like and and, you know it was him bringing me to 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 buy sneakers uh and and in in a way it's funny because he'd also kind of hate this my dad was my dad was an old school guy you know my my dad still puts on a sport jacket to fly coach on spirit okay and I'm I, I used to be like dad they don't do this anymore. Right. The guy next to you is literally wearing a T-shirt and hasn't showered in three days. <laughs> okay, um, and, but that that was just that was just who he is. But so that's why it was kind of personal. It was a way to 
kind of bring my personality up here. Uh, when I started doing it, people people were like, well, what, are we, what about the decorum? And I was like, have you heard some of the things coming out of people's mouths oh, amen in Congress? You're worried, about the, point. you're worried about the decorum of my sneakers? They're like, well, what about the, the tradition? And I was like, well, they don't wear powdered wigs up here uh, <laughs> anymore. So, like, you know, like things change. What was nice, actually, is that we're, there were already a lot of people wearing sneakers yeah. up here way before uh, I got here um, because of just how this place is built with all the marble and all the stairs and all the walking that, that we do all, all day long. And so when I decided uh, and, you know, I got with uh, Chavez de Rimer and we decided to do this and kind of embrace uh, sneaker culture um, and really youth if you go to companies nowadays, most yeah. people are wearing sneakers. You watch news when they you show any of the anchors, they're all in sneakers. And you 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 talk to young people or you look at any of the young people that work here on Capitol Hill, they're all they're all in sneakers. Um, it was a real way to kind of embrace it uh, and try to bring people together with something that I just think is fun. It's part of you know pop culture, and it it really tries to connect young people uh, in, in, into government. So that was really the whole whole idea. And it's very bipartisan. You mentioned Chavez de Rimer. I know you've done a lot to try to drive bipartisanship. Can you, can you tell us about that and, and the importance of, of the caucus for bringing both sides of the aisle together? Yeah, well, Jordan actually has a, a famous quote. He does. Okay, yep. when uh, they try to drag him into politics, he said, Republicans buy sneakers too. Yep. Uh, and, and so th- not, I don't subscribe to this that everything has to be partisan. That's something that kind of happened, unfortunately, after after like the Trump years, and I don't blame him per se, but also just the entertainment of it all and all the social media and all TV is that everything now is political, yep. like everything. Like I don't care, like pizza is political. Okay, we can trust me. If you go on there and you start googling pizza, you'll find people fighting over pizza. Okay, and, and it just everything's political. And I, for me, I just don't think this needs to be political. I thought that this was a really, again, a good way to bring people in the room without the politics to try to find how we can connect up here. We don't spend enough time together, let alone with our own party, especially folks across the aisle, to get to know them. This was another way to get people in the room to, to tune out all the nonsense that's gone, going on up here, learn about their kids, their family, find ways to connect. Um, and and I, I really do think sneakers is a way to a way to do that. It really just bridges all sorts of different people of different backgrounds of different generations and sneakers are kind of having their moment, right? Yep. Yeah, everything, everything has a, has a moment, you know, sneakers right now, I think are, are really having the moment. And I still think we're climbing up that hill. I don't even think we've plateaued. Um, I mean, I could, it just, so that's, that was the idea of just, if it has to be by it has to be bipartisan. We have to find more ways to spend time together, and this was one way to do that. You know, yeah. I, I think too one of the most interesting moments of last year was seeing the the first ever sneaker day on the hill. And I would, from our perspective, that's one of the biggest achievements of of the caucus so far. I know there's a lot more you're going to do, but um, what did you think about it? How did you think it went? Can if anybody doesn't know about it, could you t- tell them you know what exactly is sneaker day on the hill and how does it work? Yeah, so June of last year, I think it was the twenty first. Uh, we did Sneaker Day on the Hill where, you know, everyone kind of embraced this idea that we can wear sneakers. Because, you know, still on the floor, you know, the, the staff there is like, you know, a little iffy, you know, the admin folks. But by the way, there's no rule that you can't wear sneakers on the floor. In fact, there's no rule really regarding footwear at all. And I, I learned that from Hakeem Jeffries on the campaign trail. He came and visited me when I was running for office. Uh, and we started talking about you know, my family's from Brooklyn and Brooklyn and hip hop culture. And just, I was a big sneaker head. And by the way, I wasn't wearing sneakers that day. I came in like the nicest Oxford <laughs> I had. It looked like I was, it looked like I was attending a funeral. Um, and he was in sneakers. And I was like, well, if I, if I knew I could have worn sneakers, I would have worn sneakers. And we started yeah. talking about it. Uh, and he, he loved the idea. And so he was the one who kind of gave me the idea about doing, uh, doing a sneaker day on the Hill, uh, which, which, which we did, which was great, you know, Republicans, Democrats, all wearing like their favorite sneakers, come together. We have some senators that participated, so we're now it's now kind of a bicameral yep. uh, uh, sort of event going on up here. Uh, but but that's really what what you know. So sneaker day, so we did that uh, to try to bring more awareness. And I, I think we're going to start getting into you know a lot of the charitable stuff. I mean, obviously, a lot of the foot manufacturers do a ton yeah. with their foundations and charities. Uh, and again, I just think it's another way where we can we can help out. I mean, most kids you meet, you know, whether it's a back to school or even a holiday, 
I mean, if you could give them a fresh pair of Nikes or Jordans or, uh, you know, Pumas or Adidas, uh, most of the kids will take that over a toy. For sure. Right? And so sure. there, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for us to, to give back. And I, I, you know, I look forward to working with a lot of the folks and their foundations on, on, on trying to do that, to give back to the, some of the kids out there that, you know, are less fortunate and can't afford these things. Yeah, we do as well. And you said sneakers are having a moment. I want to kind of tap in on that, Congressman, because in your view, how do they contribute to the broader economy? For us as an association, we're bridging the gap between kind of D.C. and formality and and loafers and then industry innovation, you know, I hate to say the casualization of America, but how do you see the sneaker industry as a, a part of the American economy and informing what members of Congress should be doing in support of the industry itself? Well, I mean, there's no secret. I mean, Nike's doing okay. So is Adidas and Puma and all these yeah. sneaker manufacturers, Reebok. I mean, I don't know if you see it. Reebok pumps are back. They are back. I, oh, I, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, and so uh, sneakers are definitely contributing to the economy. Um, you know, in, in especially... If, you know, unless you're unless you're like me who wears a sneaker once every three months and then puts it back in a box, you know, you're constantly <laughs> you're constantly rebuying these things. I, I know I'm personally contributing to the economy. I have like a I have probably almost two hundred pairs now. Going back to the economy, these secondary sites are now billion dollar businesses. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And so yeah, no, the sneaker industry, the footwear industry is a huge driver in the economy. It's a huge driver as far as employing folks uh around the country, really around the world, quite frankly. It's a it's a it's a global business. Uh and you know, it, it what what is interesting is, you know, unlike a lot of other things that you could think about, you know, sneakers are so tied to the sports industry. Yeah. You know, yeah, a kid wants a jersey, sure, but not like sneakers. I mean, uh, you know, whether it's the a, a soccer player or a basketball player or a football player uh, or a tennis player, you know, there's other ancillary things, but it's still not like sneakers. Sneakers are still the thing that uh, is so coupled with sports persona, which I have two boys, I mean, the only thing that matters. It, sorry, Taylor Swift, you don't matter <laughs> in my house. Uh, you know, they're more interested in Travis uh, Kelsey. I wish, I wish I could say that. You know, they're 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 definitely more interested in Travis Kelsey. In fact, they're very mad at Taylor. Oh, I bet. Uh, yeah, they believe that Travis Kelsey's performance is down. He's distracted for sure. Uh, well, I, wouldn't you be? Um, yeah, in fairness, he's only human. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it just it, it's again that's the sneaker footwear phenomenon is that you know you have these huge athletes and the the thing that defines them you know in in the private you know industry is really sneakers it is it is their sneaker deal look at look at what's his name with uh with puma right now uh lamello ball yeah right yep i mean every kid's got that shoe i mean and they have it in the 40 different flavors i mean that that shoe is just on fire i go to my kid's school and the kids have lamello balls everywhere yeah um, and so it, it really is just a unique sort of connection to how kids can associate with a lot of these these athletes. Yeah, for sure. That, that's a great point on kind of the cultural aspects of this and how important it is to young people, um, just the impact it has on communities. So from your perspective with, with the Sneaker Caucus, how do you envision the caucus uh, recognizing that or um, – or engaging with the, the more the cultural aspects, not just the economic aspects, but culture as well. Well, I mean, look, if Michael Jordan's listening, uh, you know, <laughs> I'd love to have him come up here to the Hill. Uh, no, I mean, I, I really think the way, again, to try to, to do this correctly is I, I, I really want the Sneaker Caucus to be uh, something that, bring, that Democrats and Republicans can do good in their community with. I really think that's a huge aspect um, because, look, these – these things are not inexpensive. Yeah, they, they 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 are expensive, and not everyone can afford hundred dollar or one hundred twenty five dollars sneakers. Uh, you know, the, you know, families have to make tough choices, and that's not that's not one that they're going to make. And I, I really just think that you know, there's a lot of people here, there's a lot of people in the athletic industry, and with these foundations to really give back to these kids, because again, that's the that's the connection. It 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 is it is. It connects them to that athlete. It makes them feel cool in school so they don't feel left out. Um, I mean, again, going back to anything they could ask for, right? Sure, everyone would like a Michael Jordan jersey, but 
it's still it's still the sneakers yeah. uh, that 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 these kids uh, that these kids want. And so I, I I think it's the positive aspect. You give a kid a new pair of Jordans, you see the smile on their so face. True. You know, and they could be going back to a really bad you know living situation. They could just have a tough childhood, but you give them a new pair of sneakers, and it's just like a whole new whole new outlook for them. Um, it, it's bragging rights. It's it's all sort of stuff. It's it's conversation. Yep. I know every time my kids, you know, get a new pair of sneakers or one of their friends get a new pair of sneakers, I I get a report, you know, on like oh yeah, yeah. you know, dad, you know, what's his name got the the new you know I can't even pronounce his name you know Giannis and a yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll go with Giannis. <laughs> I get the new Giannis sneakers. Yeah. You know? And so, um, yeah, I just again, it's also another way. You know, the age of Congress up here is not. It's not really young. No, it's not. We're getting a little younger. You're skewing it. We're getting a little You're younger. skewing it downwards. But, it's good. But I but I think it's another way again for us to connect to the next generation. How do we how do we get people interested in politics? How do they associate with us? And that's one of the the things that I think me wearing sneakers every day around here has done is I can't tell you the amount of young people yep. that come up to me and they're not like, "Oh, what's going on with the Hunter Biden contempt hearing?" <laughs> <laughs> right? That's not what they're asking me about. They're they're like, hey, hey, what what pair of shoes are you gonna wear? Or hey, did you get this shoe just dropped? Did you get a pair? Or hey, I I have shoes. And so again, it's that it's that connection. Or in fact, they don't even know my name. They just go, you're the sneaker guy. Sneaker guy, yeah. You know. And so uh, it, again, it's another way to to try to get young people interested in this place. Because I don't, I don't blame them why they're not interested. Right. I hear that. Well, Congressman Sneaker, um, I have one last question for you. And then we're going to do a surprise little fun segment that will be, be fun to close us out. Think about the future of the Sneaker Caucus. We're at the start of the year. Uh, your team is phenomenal. We, we adore working with them. And we have a lot of cool ideas. But before we get out over our skis, as the chairman of the Sneaker Caucus and the founder, what is your vision for the Sneaker Caucus in 2024? Well, I could tell you as far as... A- trying to accomplish stuff in here in the building. The media is really on me to get them to be able to wear sneakers in the speaker's lobby. Okay. Yeah, that was a that was a big issue last year because members can wear sneakers in the sneakers lobby, but the media is not allowed. <clears throat> and actually, this is a bigger issue for a lot of the female journalists. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, this is a horrible place to wear heels. I, I, I don't know how Nancy Pelosi does it. She, she has calves, I guess, built like nobody else <laughs> she still wears heels around here everywhere up and down the stairs and she's always on the go god god bless her but but most of uh, most of the female journalists who also obviously are on the younger side you know they're wearing sneakers and they're not allowed to wear they're not allowed to wear sneakers up here i also think i want to change the I, I don't want it to be passe i don't know if you remember it was a huge hubbub in articles when both Kevin McCarthy, Speaker McCarthy, and Minority Leader Jeffries wore casual oval. dress shoes yep. in the Oval. Yep. Right? And when Joe Biden is wearing sneakers. Right. I don't know if you've seen it. Joe Biden's been out coming there. Coming off Air Force One. Yeah, coming off yep. Air Force mm-hmm. One wearing sneakers. Well, well, by the way, let's be honest. If you're on a plane for five or six hours and you could wear sneakers or you could wear Oxfords, you're going to wear sneakers. Sure. Absolutely. Mo- most people, when they fly international take their shoes off yep okay you know over overnight and so i want to get to the point where it's just not it's not passe it's not like oh like we don't, we don't need a new york times breaking news right that speaker mccarthy <laughs> you know, and and minority drivers wore casual dress shoes listen things change yeah right it's not offensive um you know uh at all yeah i mean look some of the shoes i have are very colorful and you know sometimes when i wear a bright red pair and I'm giving a speech from the well. I could see the vein popping out of the folks' heads, <laughs> you know, behind me that are that are that are part of of the institution. Yeah. Uh, but this trends trends change. They do. Uh, and this is something that we're behind. It's not surprising that government is behind private industry or culture. Um, and so that that would be the the achievement, getting to the point where, quite frankly, it just. Members wear shoes. They wear sneakers. Yep. Some are more casual. Some are more dressy. Some, um, some are more interesting. Some are, you know, Jordans from twenty years ago. And it's just part of the part of the deal up here. It's no longer, it's no longer a thing. I I will tell you this. I wore, I wore a pair of Jordans, um, to, um, to the White House for the Christmas party, um, and it was the pair from Space Jam. The yep. all black with, yep. with the patented leather with 45 on the back. 
Uh, and uh, I went as, when I was in line for the photo, right, uh, the vice president was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you wore the right shoe. And and it was funny because she was like, "Did you did you did you did you pick this out?" And I was like, "Well, it is a black tie option. Right. It is a patented leather mm-hmm. black shoe." And she was like, "No, these are the best shoes here." And so of course they are. Yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, no one, I mean, at least no one to my face was like, "Oh, <laughs> what is he doing?" But there were there were there were you were know, you, were you the only one wearing wearing sneakers? Oh what? yeah, no, this was the White House. <laughs> I, I'm I'm still the one breaking ground there. There's no doubt. This is an evening event at the White House, black tie. Yeah. Um, is there any other member of Congress who's trying, you know, I know you do it all the time, but are there others who are? I mean, the Post like, had, the post had Virginia two? Fox when you, they cover sneaker day. She was wearing sneakers. Yeah. So, I mean, anything's possible, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Those were made of wood. She, they were original. <laughs> okay, no, I'm kidding, Virginia. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Chairwoman Fox. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, Congressman Hunt uh, yep. has worn, he's worn some some cool Jordans. Uh, with some really snappy suits. I mean, by the way, again, it, we're 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 wearing like really nice suits, really nice ties. And if you if it's connected, you yep. know, and it goes together, I mean, I think it pulls off the whole outfit. I mean, think about it. in dress shoes. How many colors do we have? Is it even a handful? Really? No, it's two. If it's, you have two, if you have two fingers, it's a handful. It's black and brown. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I mean, let's be honest. If I wore a a a blue shoe in leather, people would be like, eh. Yeah, I think that's right. So, I mean, we have two options. So, with sneakers, you have 30,000 oh, yep. yeah. yeah. options. Yeah. Um, All right, so that leads us to our final segment. We haven't done this in a while, Blake, so we're going to dust off the whole what you got, what you getting. And the way this works, Jared, or Congressman, I should say, excuse me, uh, is that we, sh- we each go around and say what we're wearing on our feet currently and then what our next plan, what are we going to buy next? Ooh. Like, what are we eyeing right now? So, for example, I'll go first. I'm wearing a pair of Allen Edmonds sneakers that my friend Dan Friedman from Clara sent over to me. Uh, they're they're slip-ons. They're premium leather. They have a, a white uh, midsole, outsole. They squeak when you walk across the Longworth House office building floor, so I know they're sneakers. And my plan is to get – I'm eyeballing – Jerry Lorenzo, Fear of God, is back with Adidas. He's got Adidas Athletics, some really cool sneakers. So I've got my eye on those. So that's what I got, and that's what I'm getting. So, Thomas, you go next. We'll give the congressman some time to think about it. What's on your feet now? I, I know he has a lot of choices. To yeah, yeah. He's here, scrolling so. right now. I, by the way, I, I, am, I am looking at what is pending, okay? <laughs> what I am bidding on currently, what is pending, okay? Because I want to give a right answer here. Okay, good. Uh, so I've got the Nike Cortez on. I like classic. The, the classic shoes. I love That's classic shoes. That's the classic shoes. colorway, too. Yeah, and, and the 80s. I love the 80s. I love those those throwbacks. Forrest Gump. That's what he, Forrest he put Gump. on I was going to go with, like, yeah, yeah okay. Well. <laughs> you are from that Alabama. Was, yeah, that was my inspiration. Alabama, Forrest Gump. Had to do the uh, the Cortez. Yep. Um, but also, uh, as far as what I'm getting, so I went to Adidas. Uh, the New York has a great store. I got they the do. Sambas, Avenue, shoe yep. of the year. Um, they had a lot that, that, I you know, that I saw in the store that, that the colorways were interesting on, on, um, on those shoes. So I want to get another pair of Sambas or the, the classic Stan Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Those are classic. So Congressman, what you got on and we know you're going to represent Nike cause we, we got to spread the love in this podcast. We can't just say Adi the whole time. So what you got, what you getting? All right. So the weather currently in DC is horrific. Yep. I mean, we're under a flood watch. There's just water everywhere. So I didn't want to risk. Bringing out like a really nice pair. Yeah, of course not. Understandable. But I am one of the probably few people that actually have a pair of Michael Jordan hiking boots that are weather resistant. That's amazing. Okay, so they are they are not fancy looking, but these are indeed Jordans. Yep. Okay, and oh yeah, you can take these on a mountain. You can go to the Sahara, and they are weather <laughs> weather resistant. In fact, the, these Jordans have actually been to Jordan. Interesting. Yeah, I took the Jor- I took the Jordans to Jordan. Oh man, uh, I'm and- sure you did a lot of fun- had a lot of fun with yeah, that. Yeah, these met the king. <laughs> so that's what I'm wearing. Did the king comment on said shoes? No, out there, you know, everyone's kind of yeah, yeah. boots and stuff. Okay, good. So you fit in. This wasn't like at the White House with the vice president. Yeah, so. no, th- these are not the right ones. Yeah, yeah. The- yeah. Each shoe kind of has a purpose. That's true. This is the this is if it's raining. Yep. Or if it's there's snow, right? Or yeah. if you're gonna go hiking. These are the right ones. They, are they actually make these in a couple of cool colors. I got them in black, but but they make these in a couple of cool colors. Gotcha. Make All them right. In, they make them in yellow, where the whole bottom is yellow. Pretty cool, actually. 
Middle of the good at night. All right. Do you want to know what I... What you uh, getting? Well, I'm not going to g- talk about what I'm getting. I want to talk about what a shoe I want. Okay. And and I it's and aspirational. You can say yeah, this you're is getting. this is this is aspirational. Okay. Well, I've, right. I've been bidding on it for two years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I've been losing because I can't. I just can't. I can't get there. I can't get there. But there maybe is, Virginia Fox is outbidding you. <laughs> by the way, I will buy these for Virginia Fox if she would wear them. I, that's not true, actually, because they're just so expensive. <laughs> So there's a pair of Jordan Four retros. Okay. Uh, the 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 Dorn uh, uh, the Dorn Betcher pair. They made a couple of of shoes uh, with Nike and Jordan over the years. A new one actually just came out with like uh, uh, which is pretty cool. It's like green and yellow. But there's an old pair that uh, have the Superman logo. That on, is sweet. On, on on the top on the on the. You know, on the front. Oh my god! Yeah, on they the are tongue. expensive. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so you know, the the I have a limit. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, I, I would on, have that limit too. On what I'm willing to, on what I'm willing to spend. So these 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 are now going for somewhere between two and three thousand yeah. dollars a pair. Um, and so I continue to bid on them to just to see maybe one day. Just so, lowballing it. You're no, lowballing you, it. Listen, some someone could be liquidating their garage, that's right. that's you know, right. and you might you might get lucky. But th- yeah, that's the that's the aspirational pair. Yeah, just you know the idea of wearing Jordans with the Superman logo on it, and it's the only one that exists that has the Superman logo on it. That's amazing. Um, it's super cool for me. Well, Congressman, we can't thank you enough. One, for your leadership. Uh, civil service is not for the faint of heart. Thank you for serving up here. Oh, they're bringing uh, in the music. We're bringing in the music. Here comes the we're budget again. Out. Here it comes. Budget. <laughs> and for starting the Sneaker Caucus, Congressional Sneaker Caucus, it's an honor to be a part of it with you, and thank you for all your hard work. No, thank you, guys. It. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for helping me you know, do the Sneaker Caucus. Thanks for the, the footwear industry coming and supporting us. Uh, and and wanting to make this collaboration. I think it's going to be better for Congress, and we're going to help a lot of people out there. Folks, it's been another exciting edition of Shoe and Show live from Capitol Hill on this recording. Make sure you spread the word. Go to shoeandshow.com to listen to all of our amazing episodes and be on the lookout for more exciting things happening with the Sneaker Caucus. Until next time, Shoe and Show is out. Shoe-In has been brought to you by the FDRA, the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion, helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. For information about FDRA, visit FDRA.org.